Good, now we're ready to look at um, the affordable housing units on Warren Avenue. And let's see, it's 10 o'clock. If we can. What, we can make this really quick. You think no problem. Can? No problem. <laughs> <laughs> or, what do you think, a half an hour? Sarah, do you think sure. we have enough time? Yeah, yeah. If you guys spend 15 minutes, then we could, then we could have Come questions and yeah. comments for sure. 15 minutes or so. So I just, I mean, I know that we've, we've talked before. I'm Sarah Radigan. I'm the chair of the Housing Trust. So I'm here. Liz Valenta is another trustee. Um, our architect design team is here. Um, um, I think that probably in terms of issues that we're, we're looking for your guidance and, and input on, the, the, the big issues are site planning. I mean, we've tried to give you, so in the context, I know that you've been given a memo that was, I thought, really helpful in sort of framing a 40B project. So we're building affordable housing, so our permitting through the ZBA is the, the, the one-stop shop where the town gets to tell us everything you know, that has to be done. I shouldn't say that. First, we obviously have to satisfy state wetlands laws, and the, the team was in front of the Conservation Commission last night and got through a lot of the issues. I think the CONCOM wants to know that the planning board is also on board with the plan before they finalize their decision. So they've asked us to come back. I think it's August 5th, mm -hmm. is that right? Um, but um, so obviously state you know, wetlands have to be met. But then we can apply to the ZBA um, for their, uh, for their um, approval of the project, and they're going to seek your input. <laughs> which is why we're here with you today. Um, we're hoping to get as much out on the table in terms of any issues that you see, um, in terms of you know site planning, lighting, exterior finishes. Um, the site planning is probably the, the, the trickier issue and the one that I think that, um, that um, in terms of planning the neighborhood, the concerns of people in, in the neighborhood are really um, sort of at the forefront. From a housing perspective, you know, we are, the housing trust has, in some ways, limited needs. Like we're not doing a lot to this property in terms of the site. We're using the existing buildings. We don't really need to change a lot. We're not building other buildings. We're putting sheds. We need to provide parking. But the main concerns that we've heard from from neighbors in the community has talked about safety of truck traffic that's accessing the road, the, the lot and back. Um, because of the, where the bus turns around. So th those sort of um, neighborhood concerns are in some ways larger than, than you know, than again, than the housing project itself. Um, but anyway, I've said enough. Okay. Who's making mm -hmm. the presentation? Did you want to start, with? Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, Matt Waterman with uh, Land Tech Consultants. <coughs> I'm here to, with the development team, TBA Architects. Um, I was, think we sat in front of the board in a different room about a year ago. Um, we've been working, and this was the plan that was submitted both for the stormwater management permit and a notice of intent for conservation. Um, obviously to get things going um, ahead of the Zoning Board of Appeals process. Um, but what we've done here, and I can show you a quick, there's a neat little plan that Conservation Michelle had us do that focuses on, and this will be quick, the, kind of the improvements to the site. I mean, the upper panel is the existing conditions, kind of three shades pavement, grass, or woods, um, and then this is the, the net, you know, so where we're reducing pavement, um, we're increasing woods, you know, although minor in, in a couple spots to try and, you know, provide some buffers and some of the things, renaturalization that conservation, you know, was, was requesting. Um, but from a planning perspective, we met with the fire department, police department, water department, um, I think about two or three weeks ago, Currently, the water line kind of runs through the wetlands and the hill, then it comes into the building, and comes back out of the building to a fire hydrant, um, and then also comes up and services the former superintendents and then the adjacent commercial property. Um, so the water department wanted a full upgrade, you know, kind of abandon the stuff that's out in the woods and in the wetlands, and extend the water line, I think it was about 350 feet or so, to the end of kind of the, the, the intersection here. Um, so that has been shown in the plan, so all the utilities will be upgraded. There's, again, also electrical lines that run through here, so the electric lines would kind of be accessed from Warren out. Um, 
septic system, all the system, all the three buildings, the duplex, the triplex, and a duplex. I think most anyone is familiar with the kind of the con or the, the layout. Um, would all be up to a, a, le a leach field. Um, we met with the Board of Health. There was some concerns with some tankage, and I think we've addressed that. Um, so I think as, as far as utilities, I think we've met. I know the fire department had a desire to maybe push this out a little bit further, um, but we've kept it at the this first intersection, and we'll meet with them again once we could be, I've finalized this plan since I met with them. Um, Gun Club Lane, kind of the biggest change. Uh, is, is widening Gun Club Lane, which is about 10 feet wide, and we'll go to a, a 18 feet of pavement plus a, a gravel shoulder. Um, and then the access to the adjacent commercial property would you know, remain at the current point, but then come to a T turnaround um, and then kind of converting this current access into a driveway for the superintendent's building, um, removing some pavement up and through here. Um, and then uh, Obviously, from stormwater management, um, providing some rain garden up in front of the building, um, which again creates green space, some roof drains for the water department building, <laughs> um, and then a trench drain for this. There's a new driveway down here where currently there's an existing gravel drive. Um, from a site plan perspective, I know um, Justin is here with me. He can talk about site lighting. Um, and if the commission, everyone, there's also an issue with public water supply well that has kind of been uncovered in this process. There's still an existing public water supply well, even though it has been inactive since 1953. Um, so we're in the process of working with DEP and trying to get that decommissioned and declassified. Um, two big things. Have, Betsy, have, have they talked to you at all about our submission standards? Your submission standards don't apply. <laughs> it's a comprehensive permit. Mm -hmm. So we'll be, we'll be making recommendations to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Right. The recommendations are based, I would assume, on the, tip, the kind of information we usually. Yeah. That's the way it's worked before. For comprehensive permits? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Um, how it generally works is that the applicant submits in accordance with the ZBA standards. So right. well, the ZBA um, is looking for recommendations from the boards. Right. And, the, and so our recommendations would be based on the kind of information we typically would like to see. Like, um, but we, we typically ask for more than just sort of diagrammatic site plans, for example. Otherwise, what are we recommending on? Right. Oh, yeah, there's a water line there. Okay. Right. You follow me? I do. Um, but generally, um, it's a lesser standard. Um, if, if that's not been the case in this community, I'm not aware of it. So. Yeah, it's, we, um, we've, we've done this before. We've, we've done several OEDs, a couple of them, and, and we go through the site plan review process. Just. We treat it just as though it were a regular application. So it would be treated like a regular site plan site or plan a site be. plan um, for um, 40A Section 3. Regular site plan review okay. standard, okay. which we would then incorporate in a memorandum to the Zoning Board of Appeals so that we know that what we recommend to them, we, we can stand behind. Okay. There was a site plan submittal, a full pack uh, site plan that was provided to conservation and water. I don't know if it made it to this board for this. Yeah. We submitted the entire package. Who, who was it submitted to, Sarah? It was submitted to Betsy. Yeah. yeah. I got oh. information electronically, but I didn't. Oh. Was it the final version? Uh, it was the same submission that was submitted concurrently with conservation, and nothing's changed. Okay. Okay, was it side. more detailed than what we're looking at here? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Do, you, do you have that with you, Matt? Or? Um, I have okay. a reduced size set. I'm sure. <coughs> in, in our, I assume our consultants haven't had a chance to look at anything. <coughs> right. I mean, it would be helpful if I figure out what. So you, you don't think. Yeah. 
mean, I can. Oh, we can just read Sorry. Have you guys reviewed any anything to do with the submission? No. No. Okay. Okay. So I'll ship that to them. Yeah. Okay. You need to take a look at what, what they have. The playing board page where you need something. What's that? Uh, you turn the PC number for you. I think usually that's paid for, but yeah, I, don't I, I think that with other aspects of the board, there's probably some things that we can Yeah, I don't think you have to contribute to the. To the is that what you mean? The revolving? Yeah, no, I was just yeah. asking the question. Yeah. Do you mind, I, I, I appreciate what you're saying, I, and I understand your concerns, and, and I apologize if you haven't seen what I thought you saw, which was as much detail as, as has been provided to the Conservation Commission and Stormwater. Um, to the extent that those issues are, I haven't, I haven't done this with you guys, so I don't know exactly how this works, but to the extent that those issues are in the in the jurisdiction of conservation commission in this situation, if we're able to <coughs> get as far along the road as possible with you, I know that I mean you know from being part of our working group that our our time constraints are 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 urgent. We gotta go to town meeting. We gotta get to town meeting in the fall in order to do that. We gotta get through the CBA and be able to send out construction bids and. Um, that's not to say that you shouldn't be able to do your job, but it, as we're thinking about that, if we can just try to find... I don't see anything here that looks like a red herring, or I don't mean that. That's not a red, I mean, red, red, <laughs> red flag. A red flag. Red flag, that's a word. Um, but, um, you know, we just want to be sure that, that the keys are crossed the ice dotted when right. we make a recommendation to the Sony Board of Appeals. Yep. We can say absolutely we don't see any problems with anything. Right. Or, or we have some issues with this or that particular thing. Right. But right now, I mean, just as, a, as an architect looking at the site plan, that site plan, I can't really say one way or the other whether it's okay or not okay. It's just a, it's basically a diagram. But I'm hoping that some site plan that you've seen is 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 sufficient information for us to have a constructive conversation. We can talk about the generalities like the traffic issues and the relocation of the easement and those okay. kinds of things and, um, the, and and issues like you know you've got to have parking structures where are they and the, 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 those those sorts of things and general planning questions where are you going to be doing your planning and what are you proposing for that? Okay. So we can, we don't, we're not stopping the call, it's just that we sure. need, I think, a little bit more information, mostly for our consultant's sake, I think. That's the way I would characterize it. So that the, But when are you going to submit to the CBA? <coughs> I mean, that, that's a decision that we already made. We talked about this Friday. Um, we were hoping that we'd be able to submit. August 20th, is that the submission date that we have set? Yeah, I think August 20th, I mean, I think we yeah, were actually August trying 20th. to do it before then. We we're, we we're frankly hoping to advance it. Um, right. If we have to go back to come, come August 5th, then I would say August you know, 8th, whatever, you know, shortly after that ConCom meeting is when, according to what we understand, the ComCom com permit submission requirements, we have more than enough information as soon as we've got the ConCom, um, not written decision, but at least their, their, their vote on, on the direction of the proposal. So are they hiring somebody to do stormwater, or are they going to rely on Dave? The Jim Sweeney. Oh, Jim Sweeney yeah. is doing it. Okay. Yeah, no, we Richard Sweeney. Uh, Richard Sweeney, excuse me. Richard Sweeney. Yeah, we submitted a stormwater management plan. Okay. Richard, in conjunction with the NOI. Okay. okay. So it, it could be that we're 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 doing this concurrently. So we can we can submit to the ZBA based on what, what we've got, and if we're continuing the hearing with you with additional information, you're going to have an input period. You know, of, I don't know, a couple of weeks. At yeah, least, I don't see right? what I would want. Then. Yeah. You see I mean, what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. I yeah. Think that that still would work for us. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. yeah, I mean, you don't have to have everything finalized with us right. before you submit to the CBA right. because it'll be they'll run concurrently anyway. Right. Okay. Sorry. So where were we? We were talking about roads and uh, utilities in, in the streets. Yeah. No, and I think from a site and civil, we discussed. I think the relocation of the the basic commercial drive and there's an existing building with parking and an indoor garage and um, all the equipment parking and um, the parking for the existing building was there was, there was going to be garages but it would just be four spaces and a shed um, and it was basically trying to reduce the impervious and minimize the impacts um, to the site was the goal of I know TBA architects and you know what we've been working on the past couple of weeks um, so you have two new spots for this unit, two spots for this unit, um, and then the goal was that the, the bus would be able to come in, turn around, and then access like it normally does. There was, some, <coughs> you know, we had it here, but there was a conflict with parking with these units. Um, Nobody has a parking garage. Uh, this just no more this building. Is that a building? Yeah. Each, there's three yeah. units, and they each have a, a single car stall. Those are the only ones with parking. Right. Close parking. Right. Close parking. So everyone else is exterior, exterior, exterior. And how would the bus turn there? Uh, he would come down to the... Okay. Is there a... Isn't there a water line that goes up that up the road that becomes a driveway now? Um, yeah, there, isn't there a water yep, line? There is an existing water line for the adjacent property and that would get tapped into the new water main. That is shown on the site plans. Okay. We can definitely get you copies of the site plans in the middle, and it'll probably be updated based <coughs> on our discussions with conservation. With that water line, you're getting rid of the easement? You're changing the easement? Correct. So, what's going to happen with the easement of the water line that's been running under what was an easement? Right. We probably have the, to maintain I think, some form of it. I think we're going to have to, there's no, as, uh, I, I don't, I don't. I have to look back at this, but I believe there's actually no utility easement of record, but we will need to, to create one for both the water and the gas, because the gas also runs up the road. Is there, I don't know if there's anything else under the... There. Yeah, just, 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 so so we, would, we would have to, to write an easement agreement. Okay. So that would be part of a ZBA decision. Yeah. Have to be. Bus doesn't have any trouble doing the every day the three point turn. That's that's okay with them. That's, that's actually what they do. That's what they currently, currently the water department, the water department parking lot, which has a big kind of a wider berth or turn here, so that there's they use that parking lot now as a turnaround, which most of the vehicles do. When I was there, there was a couple of vehicles that came in. The road into um, the Ogilvy's property, how wide is it? Uh, it was 12 feet wide, which was based on just the, 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 the current access is 12 feet wide, so we mimic that. The 25 foot radius is at the entrance. And again, the total width of Gun Club Lane, lane excuse me, with the gravel shoulders is 21 feet wide. There's some mature trees along the the westerly side of Gun Club Lane, so everything shifted away from the wetlands, the widening. And how many trees you have to take out? Um, we have the trees located. I don't have that number for this, for this island, if you will, um, but we can determine that. They've all been located. Uh, we we have a, a, a general landscape plan. It um, uh, we tend to use uh, natural plantings, and, and uh, but we hadn't. There's nothing finalized, mainly because this Ogilvy's uh, easement change and the way that the parking is going to work uh, there. 
uh, for for 71 um, wasn't wasn't finalized. So it's still in progress. So it's still in progress. Um, sorry. Do you one one thing that's that's uh, not shown here, and I'll sort of point that out right away. So we do plan on doing plantings of some kind along the edge of of the property here at 71 um, for the neighbors. But, um, what, what what kind of plantings? So I, I think one of our thoughts is the rhododendron, uh, something like rhododendron uh, along this edge, and then uh, it could be that we go with a fence actually along the backside. You know, Proximity and closeness to, um, to the neighboring house, which is right here. So it's the, the neighboring house. <coughs> uh, there is a. It's right there. Sorry, there is a house. There's a residence right there on that property as well. Those existing trees, proposed trees. Uh, on this one, these are existing trees. Right. Deciduous or whatever. Yeah. So the, this one doesn't show uh, the, the new plantings, but um, so we, that that piece we haven't uh, submitted the landscape piece to you yet. Okay. But we'll. That's easy. Uh, yes. Okay. okay. Good. Um, lighting. So we have site lighting. Um, we, we've shown here. It's sort of. So there, there are wall sconces. What we're doing is uh, either side in, in certain locations, uh, sort of right um, above uh, the doorways or between doorways. Um, well, every, every location we show is at a man door. Um, yeah. And they're uh, mostly wall sconces. And, and uh, there are a few that are um, projected up slightly over the, the large openings in the water department. <coughs> and they're all, uh, we submitted that list uh, as well. They're all dark skies compliant, um, and our calculation right now is around 14,000 for all three. For all three, for all three. Oh, yeah, for all three combined. So we're we're just sticking with, you know, the, sorry, this, these ones are under a roof <coughs> on, on 71. All of them are under porch roof. Um, like I said, on, on the water department, they're just next to man doors. We have man doors at the garages as well. Uh, and then uh, two of the three at 6068 um, are under porch roof uh, as well. We normally like to see the touch sheets on them, even for ones that soft it now. So we've, okay, so you, we've sent those. We've got those. Yep. Yep. Well, we're going to be half lighting on the sidewalk. There's two parking spaces up in the back door and two points. That's something that you want. It. it is up a bit of a Unless they maybe they maybe just issue flashlights to the <laughs> <laughs> residents. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, what do you mean for all those paths unless they're lit by the light like, of the building, which green they are. So that one's green. Yeah, and then the other properties as well. I see some. Selectmen have officially asked the Traffic and Sidewalk Committee to make it a priority to uh, look at seeking funds at a fall town meeting to construct sidewalks. There's been some preliminary um, site work done by Steve Fogg uh, in connection with Michelle Rosenda from Conservation to look at, at where the sidewalks would go. Uh, and Tom Collins did some estimates. Yeah, and um, the there's been some discussion um, of linking, if a sidewalk were to put in linking the sidewalk from Boston Post Road to the recreation area and therefore CPA funds could potentially be. I thought sidewalks qualified anyway as, 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 as pathways. Mm. The one on Brown Street is. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> using CPE funds for that. Sorry, yep. okay. um, uh, apparently, there has to be an argument about recreation or there's some wiggle, wiggle line. So where would the thing go? Yeah, I don't understand. It's so the, 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 um, the, the, the plan that, that has, again, you know, this is rep plan, the committee out that the traffic and traffic sidewalk and hasn't even seen it, but internally um, shows um, sidewalks on the, uh, let's say, on the, the, east, the east side of Warren Ave. So as you're walking from the post road up Warren Ave, on the right hand side. Trying to find the north area. So the top side. The top side. Yeah, that's right. And but the property line looks like it comes right down to the pavement. No. That's not accurate. Um, no, that that's the so Warren Ave right away is actually a 50 foot right away. Oh, okay. So that's not accurate. Yeah. Okay. And so the sidewalks come right through here, right? I don't remember what happens here. I think maybe the So I think here. this is more accurate. Yeah. 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 Okay. So there was discussion about doing some kind of pathway or kind of trail or so it doesn't look like a straight shot side. Okay. And, and where does it end? Does it keep going all the way to Isabella's house? Or does it, <laughs> uh, I haven't seen that plan. No. Okay. Yeah. I, I think okay. it would end somewhere, uh, you know, within the Warren Avenue property. There's there's room in our area to, to allow for it, you know, depending on how the sidewalk design is, comes comes out. But it goes all the way up to the post road. That's what the that's what the that's the what the sign shows. Plan. Yeah. They, they want to do this by a fall town meeting? Wow. Yeah. By fall town meeting. Design mm -hmm. funds. Must be design funds. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it could I, be, I don't know. Couldn't be construction. Because right. Right. The CPST doesn't meet until September and they have to do a presentation. Right. Well, but Tom Collins done some pretty detailed There's analysis yeah. of yeah. what cost. So. But does, do we know what it is? What it will cost? What is it? The, it was something like, I mean, the rough cost was, was something like $320,000. Yeah, and I, but I don't think either of us saw a layout. I mean, I saw a sketch. Okay. Did you not well, see? Uh, yeah, there's, there's a sketch like out there. The width of it and the material being used to use Yeah, it's not well, really a sidewalk. It's kind of like more like a pathway. No, actually, it was a sidewalk. Oh, it's a sidewalk. Right. Sidewalk. But there's yeah. been some yeah. people in the neighborhood that want more of a path. Okay. Right, but it, if we if the sidewalk gets put in and has to comply as much as feasible with ADA. Right. Okay. So that won't have any impact on anything that's going on with the housing. That's a totally separate. It is, except for that the housing trust is, has you know come to the selectmen to. to be one of the voice of many people who are interested in seeing it happen. So we'll, we'll do our best to continue doing that as, as members of the neighborhood. Okay. Anybody more questions at this point? No. Comments? Yes, um, I'd like to address the issue of the relocation of the uh, Ogilvy's easement to their back lot. And um, I think that this is a very, very unsafe um, proposal. And historically, uh, about uh, 35 years ago, there was in fact a secondary access to the Ogilvy's back lot, which pretty closely replicates the suggestion here for a primary access. And what happened is that Ray Ogilvy and Alden Whittemore responded to um, the fact that there were a couple of near accidents with trucks coming onto Gun Club Lane at that angle between uh, the trucks and the, and the cars that go up and down Gun Club Lane. And so they took it upon themselves to basically extinguish that um, access route and filled it all in with a lot of soil so that the trucks no longer were able to do that. And so um, 
now, 35 years later, we have many, many more cars, uh, namely people using the Jericho Town Forest to park in the designated parking area. And, um, you know, I, I think uh, it's just, um, and I have mentioned this to the Affordable Housing Trust on several occasions, including most recently yesterday morning. Um, I, I feel that this is a very, very bad idea uh, from a safety perspective. I also think that Ogilvy's is a business that's been in this town for almost a hundred years and that they should not have to deal with the rerouting of their traffic in this manner. I think it's much safer for them to make the straight shot down Warren Avenue on the existing route to uh, their back lot. And really, what's going on here apparently are two different things. One is changing 71 Warren Avenue, the former superintendent's house, to a two-family. Uh, they feel it necessitates a separate uh, uh, driveway and parking, uh, which is something that we were never presented at town meeting when we voted in favor of this whole parcel. And uh, but when I brought it up, brought this up at the uh, meeting of the trust yesterday morning, they said, "No, no, no. What's really driving this is the school bus turnaround." And to me, that's just as dangerous, if not more so than rerouting the trucks. I mean, the thought of a school bus coming down Gun Club Lane um, and making a turnaround there and expanding the lane, and I do agree, by the way, that there should be some expansion of Gun Club Lane. With all the car traffic, uh, you know, it's hard for people to get by each other. It's not impossible, but you do have to go up on the soft shoulder to do it. And so it's not a bad idea for the town to uh, expand on Lane a little bit, but that uh, spur that they're showing is just, um, you know, it's just uh, an invitation to, uh, you know, some really serious accidents, and I, I think it shouldn't happen. I think that, um, you know, another way to accomplish the uh, bus turnaround, as we discussed um, yesterday, would be for the school buses to just back into Warren Lane, which is the spur that you say, thank you, uh, if they could just uh, back in there and of course notifying all the neighbors ahead of time that this is going to be the new procedure um, and then turn around that way. You don't have to reconstruct uh, a neighborhood and reconfigure the roads to allow a school bus to turn around. So I, I strongly object to this and I hope the planning board will consider um, the serious serious safety issues and um, and I think that you know a hundred year precedent ought to be respected and left alone and not screwed around with just for the sake of an extra driveway on, on a, on a uh, house that they want to convert to a two family and, and the bus. I, I just think it's a really, really bad idea. And so do many of my neighbors and so does Ogilvy's which is present here today. Ogilvy's objects to the relocation of the easement. They do. For the same reasons? Some of the same reasons. I think that it's, it's a lot of change or a lot of effort just to make a bus turn around. How does it negatively impact you? Uh, it's the angle of the road going in and out. We get trucks and trailers on them, occasional tractor trailer trucks. Um, even fire trucks getting down around that corner. That would be uh, a big concern. I would like, you know, like Isabella said, put the turnaround at the corner of Warren Lane, you may have to soften that corner a little bit to make it a little easier to turn it back into that one there. Leave the easements the way they are and put the driveway into 71 on the right-hand side of the property and then split it into two parking areas on either side of the house. And then you just put either a privacy fence or some greenery mm. along the property line by the right of way, by the easement, to, to break up the, the two. That way, you know, I have, you know, all the driveways are coming out onto Warren Avenue, actually Warren Avenue extension, if you will, as well as both easements coming out of the Warren Avenue extension. 
It can be a stop sign, a stop sign at both easements when they come out onto the extension. If traffic coming out of that area is a problem, so we can all stop and start at one time. Uh, so as far as the safety issue goes, maybe that would, would take care of that and the bus turnaround issue. And it just seems to allow, you know, an awful lot of change for a little bit of get back. It seems to me part of the purpose of the change, too, is to separate the driveways, right? Instead of being a shared driveway with Ogilvy's, it's now separating the driveways. And, and, that, so, and there's also traffic calming, because I mean, there, there's a tendency, this kind of is almost like an off-ramp, you know, so there's the tendency to keep your speed as you're, you know, you're not getting up this way. I think the Mr. planning process was to, you know, to kind of formalize this as a 90 degree and to kind of make it a little tough to turn, which causes them to have to slow down and make that turn. So that was kind of the goal of pushing this down. And simultaneously, the, the, the bus turnaround was, was it had to be provided. So we, we, we put, just, you know, this seemed like a logical place to And you've done templates, obviously, yeah. the bus turnaround. Yeah, and there was, a, there was a revised, some comments that there would be, this would be widened with some gravel to accommodate uh, an 18-wheeler. Uh, it hasn't been put on the plans, but it was submitted just kind of in sketch form to the commission last night. Then it was also to separate again, kind of like the traffic. I mean, obviously they're coming through here either way, but it was kind of separated one more, one more step removed from the buildings. Push it further down. What's the matter with the, with the proposal to have the bus turn around there in that street? Is that is that I, difficult? You know, I have to admit there was discussion about that at some earlier meetings, and in fact, the, the neighbor who lives right there and unfortunately is away and so she's not here but I, and I recall the discussion had something to do with it not being either safe or feasible and I, I the, the my sense was that Warren Lane is slightly on an incline out mm -hmm. and yeah. you live along there so you can speak to mm -hmm. us but mm -hmm. and the, it's rather narrow and in terms of if you're concerned about the bus being able to see and the people who live on Warren Lane being able to see as they're coming out, um, it, it was not ideal. Um, I, I think it's a possibility, but I think it is, you know, when we're talking about these issues, I mean, I think that the driver of this change for the Housing Trust and for the Permanent Building Committee, who's really been, been sort of in charge of this for the past, you know, several months, has been the, the consistent concerns about traffic, the speed of traffic and the speed of the truck traffic going into Oakley's. And so, not everybody who's using that site is speeding along, and, and <clears throat> but the way that the, the driveway access is now, all the neighbors who we talked to said this is this is a real problem. And from my you know the occasional visits to Warren Ave over the past several years, I I noticed that the the the, the trucks going at a pretty fast clip or really close to a house that now is going to be occupied. Um, so yeah. it is, I mean, it is, it would, be, it would be cheaper and easier for the Housing Trust not to make changes, uh, you know, don't get us wrong, but we're, we're trying to respond to, you know, concerns of the brothers in the neighborhood. So um, it's up to the selectmen anyway. This is just, we don't make the decision to selectmen I guess they, they got a legal opinion they can put the easement wherever they want. Right, to. they do have the right, Al, but you know, mm -hmm. is it the right Warren thing to do? And I think the planning board will be making a recommendation to the selectmen, so I yeah, hope that you see our point. From the CPA, um, the sort of the Warren Ave ends here. This is more like private roads and yeah, the rest of the ways. So I don't know if necessarily it would fall in jurisdiction of the the easement does. They have a legal. They have a legal opinion that they can put the easement wherever they want to. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've had several discussions with Tom Cullen and Steve Fogg about this, and Steve Fogg was asked by the town manager to look at other options for layout as opposed to the. 15 foot wide 
uh, easement going into Ogilvy's because one of the issues there is that you have a commercial industrial use going over residential property to get frontage and access to a roadway. And um, from what I recall, Steve Fogg had sketched something out pretty similar to this um, and was advocating a more 90 degree turn to, to slow traffic as well. <coughs> Seems to me that um, widening Gun Club Lane, everybody's in favor of. Uh, I mean, that's Gun Club Lane is really too narrow. Oh yeah. Um, and and perhaps from 35 years ago, some of the problems with I guess where it used to be, it's probably partially because Gun Club Lane was so narrow, uh, and so widening that would. Uh, be an improvement, definitely. So, so therefore, to me, uh, this does make some sense. I mean, I, I don't think that Warren Lane would be a bus turn. I mean, I'm prejudiced because I live on Warren Lane, but I don't think that would work. It, it, both the angle of it and the uh, narrowness in the corner there is, I don't see how a bus can actually do that. Um, I guess you'd have to sketch that out and see if it is actually possible for the bus to do that. I, I'm not convinced it would be. Um, anyway, so so doing it where over there, I would have the least um, impact on, uh, to me, residential uh, traffic either way. Not so good for you because that's your residence down there. Mm. And the other thing, I mean, again, this is why widening gun club would be good. You have to think about what might be happening in the future as well. I mean, if there's a potential for another building at Oak Bees. There's also a potential for more development of gun club lane. Um, so. There's not much potential. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's been precluded because, uh, you know, it's all owned by one neighbor now, yet Ning Chang, and he has no plans to mm -hmm. develop it. Um, yeah. So, uh, but I think, Alan, um, I take your point about Warren Lane, but as Kevin was saying, you know, there could be a small adjustment to make that a safe back in and, and get out for the school bus. I think that would be much, much safer than um, bringing the, the school bus down Gun Club Lane. And then remember, it's going to be confronting truck traffic. I mean, you've got the in, in kids the winter, and the trucks traveling around the same time of day. If, if you see where they put the snow in the winter. That's why I say a small adjustment to, to, you'd have to, to the lane. You'd have to Every time it snows, you'd have to get a backhoe out, out there and take the snow away the from the road. The town could do that. That's not that big a deal, is it? Yeah. You know, uh, you know uh, Warren Lane, uh, when, uh, when we have a fair amount of snow, you can barely get, if you can, uh, two cars uh, uh, by. Yeah, well, I've come close. You can barely get That's one car That's even worse. Back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I agree. Yeah. So, anyway, um, but I think this is, you know, just... Uh, an inherently bad idea is my point of view, and I, I think, um, you know, we can do better than this. There is something to be said for the traffic calming aspect of it, though, because, mm -hmm. I mean, I've heard a lot of people say that the traffic coming down more, and, you know, is um, difficult to dodge. Right. <laughs> they, they, they come down pretty, pretty fast, so... Um, they, yeah, so this wouldn't prevent them from, from, from going fast, though. Yeah. Coming, or coming, coming out. Towards the easement. It, it yeah. might yeah. slow them down coming yeah. out. Right. The, the people from Ogilvy's are generally pretty respectful. And it's not, it's not terrible. Um, and I think they've talked to the guys and and yeah. and it's stuff. Yeah, it's been a lot better. So it's not terrible. But one, one of the thing, uh, things that, as this, I think what the neighbors feel largely is that, um, the positive thing about this whole development is that it makes it more neighborhoody, whereas before it was more uh, dominated by the commercial and the water department and the putting the pipes there and all that. So, I mean, it's developed more neighborhoody already, and now it's getting more that way. So, you know, which proposal would in increase the neighborhood feel? 
and I suspect this one probably more than in other words, because the whole idea of not having that always traffic come next to a couple of families is, you know, it's, it's kind of a no-brainer. You shouldn't do that. You know? By the way, is, it, is there a reason why a driveway that serves four cars is, is like 18 feet wide? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be possible to skinny that up a little bit? Uh, yeah. Just because you're cutting the easement off doesn't mean you have to keep no, it. I, I think it has kind of got tunnel vision there. We had some parking, dual parking up in here, and then there was conflicts of getting out and the, the aesthetics of all the cars parking out front. And so it got moved to the side, and I think that was an oversight. To that. But also, the road, the existing road, you're keeping the width. Yeah, no, and I, we were just talking about that before the meeting. It seems like there might be a, it seems like there'd be an opportunity to, 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 to remove some more pavement and kind of create a more standardized driveway access. Yeah, you'll have the, the residents there are gonna be screaming up their driveway onto Warren Avenue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> and, uh, and the traffic coming off the other side. Mm -hmm. So we were, we were just talking about that. Yeah. Kind of maybe, yeah. I think putting the driveway on the right side of the property is a much better angle. Mm -hmm. Is the driveway already there? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <coughs> Could the planning board take a site walk and, you know, see what we're talking about there? Great. Yeah, why not? This is kind of all the existing pavement and gray buildings, obviously. We have parking areas and houses. All the utilities. You know, I would say just on the, I, I think Steve, you had mentioned the, the um, wanting two separate driveways. I don't think there's a really strong desire to have two separate driveways, or, but the, the finding the proper parking locations around 71 more now, um, it's, a, it's a really pretty house and people like the view from the street, so we did want to avoid parking all the cars right up in the front. It made more sense to split the parking to two sides of the house. And again, we're trying to, um, the fire department did, um, I don't think Matt mentioned this, but the fire department did ask that the remain, that the current existing driveway easement area be maintained with, what do you call it, hard pack service, yeah, so the that they could access it. Emergency in access. So, oh, okay. you know. So fire trucks can use it, but nobody else can. <laughs> yeah. They want to have the ability to get access from as many points as it's, it's kind of an isolated area from a firefighting standpoint. They can come in from Warren Lane, he was saying, and then they would, you know, they, they would like the opportunity to be able to park as much equipment down here as possible. Yeah. What, what would prevent some anybody else from using that mm -hmm. fire lane? Well, I, mean, I, I figured it'd be gated or something. You know, gated? That was just my initial, I asked them on the, they seem receptive to that. We didn't get into specifics. Kevin, would you need to, you mentioned uh, uh, for a, a tractor trailer, I mean, it would be, would you need that, that, that access to, to do tractor trailers or could they get in through the the other proposed uh, place? I don't know about the radius is that they can make that radius with a trailer truck. Well, that's, uh, I mean, Alan, are you suggesting you could keep that as a, I mean, you said your tractor trailer trucks are occasional, right? Maybe a few times a year. I can't tell you how many times exactly. Okay, but uh, if it were occasionally using the old driveway, is that what you're? Yeah. 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 Would that make things uh, better? <laughs> that just sounds like it gets to be complicated. Yeah. 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 Once in a while, they have two panel trucks that go down there. Who's going to be the uh, Yeah. The widening for the tractor trailer ends up whoa, being pretty substantial and that will be blocked up. So that would be um gravel shoulder. So, so everyone's going to be cutting that corner going in and out. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah, they blocked up. So that, that was end up with the auto turn for an 18 wheeler. So kiss the 90 degree angle goodbye. Right. But it's a little bit less of an airstrip than mm -hmm. the straight entrance now. <coughs> I think it needs more work. 
just saying. And if you were going to realistically um, widen the new entrance uh, to make it so that it was compatible, I'm sure the fire department will let us totally close off that road. It just seems crazy to, to keep it open because you know it's going to get used. And then that sort of eliminates, I mean, just sort of ruins the whole reason for why you're doing this. If you're going to let that remain, then you might as well just let it remain and right. have all the yeah. traffic yeah. go by and call it the way it is. If you're going to make it residential, then you make it residential. I, I just, if it's gated, I just see that time in the not too distant future when the gate becomes broken. Know, past tense. Yeah. <clears throat> Unless there's, a, you know, somebody polices it and hands <laughs> <coughs> up tickets. You've got to stay right out there, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> that thing, make sure it stays close. I don't know. Oh, a little guard house. Mm. Yeah. That'd be nice. It's, it's right. a nice touch. I like the guy in the helmet. Octum. <laughs> 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 I don't know. Yeah, just, <laughs> they call them checkpoints, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> checkpoints. It, it doesn't. It's, it just seems a little half baked right now. I mean, just maybe it's just me. But um, yeah, that's hilarious. Steve awesome. was suggesting a sidewalk. If we want to, we have to be done by the twenty, no later than the twentieth of August. So that means sometime in early August for the, side, for the sidewalk and the meeting. discussed earlier was you start the process with the ZBA and then, and then the planning board just makes its recommendations during that conference permit process, right? Yeah, although so if there's something as substantial as you saying don't move the easement, it's, that's, that's right. going to be a pretty substantial change in plan submission. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't there's not a right or wrong right. answer on this, but I know you guys are completely swamped, so. I don't see that. Really be if we may have a comment on the easement. I mean, I think the easement is something that's just going to work itself out. So that's my sense on the easement. All, all we'd be looking at is just we may have some input. It always helps to look at things from the ground. Um, right. You know, three dimensions in the real world. There may we may have some suggestions that would be helpful. That's all. Um, but I, I don't want to speak for the team here, but I don't know that we have a lot, um, we don't have a lot of homework to do before we get your input. In, in the sense that we could use your input as soon as you're able to give it to us. I mean, would you agree, sort of speaking for the group? Yeah, that's the sense I have. 
So I thought if we could schedule, right now we have site walk scheduled next week and then not until the 19th of August. So, but it doesn't sound like we're on the critical path necessarily. I mean, as long as we get our information in the Design Board of Appeals sometime in September, I think that would be fine. Because they can just put that into their decision and that would be the end of it. We don't need to have everything wrapped up before the CBA starts, is the point. So, I think that's what we, did, we decided earlier in the meeting. Is that, do you think that's fair? Um, I, I think that is, I mean, there's a slight level of detail. I mean, maybe we can deal with this administratively over the next couple of days. I mean, if we talk to the zoning administrator to ask her what happens if we submit this, for example, what if we submit this site plan because Concom is still reloaded? And then we need to revise plans because we've gotten input from you at a site block. Does that cause any trouble in terms of notice? You, you, you see what I'm saying? I, I just I don't know the answer to that, but I, I think it should be. I mean, I don't think this doesn't involve a hearing process on our part. Right. As far as I know, the hearing is the Zoning Board of Appeals. Right. right. So this is all meetings. So we we don't have to advertise two, three weeks in advance or any of the rest of that stuff. Right. As far as I know. So <clears throat> this could be. This is fairly informal. In terms of the meetings, um, so I think we can schedule whatever is convenient. Um, what do we have scheduled for site walks on the 19th of August? Um, Tremont, and then there's. Is that the intersection of Wellesley and South Avenue? Yes. What do they want to do there? Uh, they want to move about 15 feet. Mm -hmm. Oh no, we back to that? But we digress. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> we already looked at that. We've beaten that horse until it's no longer even twitchy. Um, well, they, Steve Frog made a formal filing because in order to <laughs> get funding to do that intersection, there's some movement that needs to be done. Do you, do you know the history of that intersection? <coughs> um, not totally. I know that there was a planning board sidewalk of it, and I know... We had, we had our own traffic engineer actually do a study of that intersection. It's, it's not being, it's not being um, realigned but what they want to do is they want to put in a, um, a lane that will allow traffic to go on the uh, school side. So if you're heading... So the wall that's getting moved is on the school side? Yeah. Oh. And then, but on the other side, they're proposing to move a very small portion, I think it's eight feet, um, in order to put a sidewalk in and an ADA ramp other side of but you know it's true. Okay, sorry. You know, like so uh, um, to get out of here. can we think <laughs> that, you know, the only reason why I'm asking is because the question is how long those sidewalks will last. So what about what So about, those sidewalks were scheduled at eight and eight thirty. Yeah. We could schedule one for nine. We could schedule one for nine. Yes. Uh, so we're here next Tuesday. Are you booked to limit? I'm not. Um, okay. On the 20th. Yeah. We're meeting with. Yeah, we're booked on the 22nd. Okay. So it would. So if it were on the 19th, we could add it at a 9 o'clock. So the 19th, we would be 9 a.m. You think you can drive from or 9 south 15 to 
right? Sure. So, so it'd be like 9.15. Come on, be reasonable. <laughs> Number one, you never leave it so bad until after that. Go up Brown Street and Highland Street. Yeah, that's yeah. a yeah. cut through. Yeah. Yeah. Just 15 minutes. You, you, don't, you don't go up Wellesley Street, you go up Highland. And then the 20th, what time for the meeting? 12 o'clock? Or the morning? At 1 a.m.? Um, we have one, two, three, four. We already have four plus <coughs> 255 Miriam. Okay, so it's some really benign that's coming up, is what you're saying. Yeah. We just, which we just did. Yeah. That's right. <coughs> so it's going to be a lot of discussion. And so let's we'll start at seven. Ah, and put them on at the beginning. So it'll be at uh, seven o'clock yeah. on, on the nineteenth. Twenty on the twenty. Oh, on the oh uh, for the site oh. one. Nineteenth is nine o'clock in the morning. Yes. On the nineteenth. Uh -huh. Seven o'clock in the evening. The twentieth. Oh, for the meeting. the meeting. Okay, great. Thank you. Just this is a sort of a uh, question about informationally. Um, for for the one unit where the access is difficult, what happens if if that's an affordable unit and a, and a handicap? Resident, or you know, gets the lottery, or how did, did does the town have to accommodate that, or do they get a different unit, or can they not apply for which, one? Which unit do you need? There, there's, I just didn't. There's one that seems a little. I just didn't know if there was an ADA standard for for affordable housing. I was just curious. There's not a. There's not a separate one. There is going to be one specifically ADA uh, compliant, or you know, uh, you know, for larger, you know, bathrooms, etc. Um, all of the the units in the water department would be well suited to someone because they're on grade. Um, so to the extent there may be one unit that's maybe tougher to access. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a there's a mix of options. But there's, there's not like a requirement that they all right. be in the district. Thank you. Okay, so we'll see everybody. Well, we'll see whoever's there on the 19th. All right. At 9 o'clock, 9 15. Thank you. 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 Thank you.